So, hello, welcome back to the virtual demo room here in Shista. Today it's me and Jimmy here. We will be hosting this webinar about the Bosch Remote Portal. This will be catching up from the last session we did with the Project Assistant tool that briefly mentioned the Remote Portal and a little bit about the Video Security Client as well. And if you didn't have the time to watch it, I would really encourage you to watch this nice video we have on YouTube. You can see the link up there. And if you cannot see the link, just search for Project Assistant and Bosch and you will have the ability to see it. So I will not waste any more time on that one. I would instead go over to the Bosch Remote Portal. The Remote Portal is a very important tool for us. Uh, it is the place where you can really administrate do remote configuration, configure remote viewing for end users, remote maintenance, and have a very nice way of adding new features and adding services to your solution. It's also a very simple way of connect a local camera to the remote portal and to the end user's graphical user interface. Uh, me and Jimmy will demonstrate this really soon. Uh, during the time of this webinar today, me and Jimmy We'll try to do this together, so hopefully we will manage to read each other's thoughts when we're planning to do stuff. So it will be pretty nice. So I would like Jimmy to say a few words. Yes, hello. I'm sitting here and I will help you and show you how to configure a remote portal with uh, the cameras. Super. Jimmy will also be acting as both as administrator, a technician and at some point an end user as well. So he will be having a multi role today. In the remote portal, the starting screen is where you see um, division into systems, services, users, and licenses. Um, and today we're going to pretend to be a system integrator. This system integrator has already got a customer called customer A. We will also add a customer B very soon, and we will add, add an end user for customer B. So Jimmy, if you briefly show us the different tabs we have here in the, in the interface. Yes, then we have services. Here we can see uh, the different services we have. Remote Connect, we do have Remote Alert, Remote Maintenance, Camera Counter Report, In-Store Analytics and Alarm Management. Yes, just a quick comment here because this is also the place where we will add the connectivity to the new upcoming Intiox cameras. So this is the place where you will add the new apps into your Bosch Intiox cameras that will be released later on this year. So these are the services. And then a really important thing is the users. So users, Jimmy, um, administrator and technician, it's a bit of a difference. The administrator can be the guy who is really handling a huge installation team, giving rights to technicians, to end users, and also the one who makes the difference between different sites and different groups and who should have the correct information if we have an issue in the system or if there is an event that we would like to be forwarded. Um, so we might start by adding a camera into the remote portal, Jimmy. Usually you are on site using the Bosch configuration manager to make sure that your camera can connect to the Bosch cloud. And this is how it looks like if you're on site without any connectivity to the Bosch remote portal. So now Jimmy being the system integrator today, being the installer out on site, and he's going to connect his camera to the Bosch remote portal. So once you're in the camera, you set the password, and you put the time and date, you go into connectivity. And you register to the remote portal. I have already my credentials here, but you add your email address and your password, and you press connect. Exactly. And for the ones of you who saw the previous session with the Project Assistant, you know that if you have made a project in the Project Assistant tool, you can always go through that path and into the Configuration Manager to have the information there. So there is a shortcut if you do the uh, Project Assistant way, but this is the way how you also can do it if you're just using Configuration Manager on site. Yes. And now the camera is connected to the remote portal. Simple as that. Yes. So then, Jimmy, over again to the remote portal to find the camera. So I will check in the systems tab. 
and now I see camera one in the entrance. So Jimmy, we might, we're not going to add this to customer A because we have a new customer called customer B. Yes, then I can press on the plus sign, add a new group, and then name the group. In this instance, we use customer B. I can add an address. And I can add a contact person. I will save. And now we have a customer B group. So Jimmy, we might add the camera to that customer B directly because we're already here. Yes. Then you press the three dots here and you press the arrows to move the group or move the camera to group B and press save. So from this point, the camera is now belonging to customer B. We can also move a camera between different customers, but that's perhaps not something we would do today. But right now, customer B. Customer B, camera one. And now we would like to have a technician that is responsible for this specific customer and this specific camera. Yes. And then again, press on the plus sign. Add a technician in this case. And you can search for your technicians. Now we only have one, so we can only check that one and press save. This technician can be, of course, used in multiple sites and multiple customers. It doesn't have to be for just one site and one customer. Depending on how the infrastructure of the company looks like and the, the way how you handle re your resources, it can really differ between different system integrators in different countries. So now we have a camera connected to a customer and we have a technician that is capable of using this system. So what can a technician do if you go into a little bit of the technician side? We can, for instance, add a technicians to get remote alerts. So in this case, you go into the camera and you press the remote alert. And here you will add a subscriber. You can add the technician and check all the boxes to get notifications from the e on in the email from connectivity, help status, or if there is a new firmware available. And press save. So now, John, who is responsible for this customer, will now get the information if something happens or if there is a new firmware or is anything is happening on the site. But this guy, John, can also go into his uh, web portal and look on his site, what is going on there as well, if he's a technician. But we will demonstrate a little bit how it looks like if we have a malfunction in a camera. So Jimmy, we have these cameras on, on the table over here. Um, I will briefly show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to mess up the recordings. I'm going to take out the SD card to create an alarm, an event, that we have an issue with the recordings. So what is happening right now is that the camera is generating an internal event. This event is pushed to the remote portal. And what will happen in the remote portal is that we look through the sites, see what technicians is responsible for this specific camera. And this camera is connected to customer B. So hopefully it will be John who has the information that there is a malfunction going on in a system. What he can do is either sit there every day, have a look at his website to see if there is an issue with the product, or he can receive an email if something has happened. So Jimmy, <clears throat> acting as John, do you have John's inbox? Yes, I will check my inbox. And here we see that I received an email. Help status, camera one entrance, recording error. And I can also check in the web browser, alert history, and I can actually see the recording error and also that the state is back to OK. Yeah, because I plugged in the SD card again. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's recording. So this is a very simple way of getting information from the solution at the site to the technician. The technician can do remote maintenance. He can do remote commissioning. He can do remote setup of everything, including end users' user rights. For the bigger sites or the technicians who likes to use the bot configuration manager 
We also have a very nice intuitive way of connecting to all his cameras and all his sites at one time. So I would think that we could go over to Configuration Manager now, Jimmy. Yes. So in Configuration Manager, then we have a button here, Connect to Bosch Remote Portal. And here you add, again, your email address and your password. Press OK to connect. So and Jimmy, interesting. I see something that looks a bit strange here. Customer A and Customer B. What happened? Why do we see two different customers? Because now I can access all the cameras and all the sites that I have been added to as a technician on. Exactly. So even if you have the responsibility for customer B, you will also have all the other sites that you're responsible for. So depending on how you're working, if you have a regional responsibility or a customer responsibility, you can group them in any way you would like. So this technician has the ability to do all configuration of all the different products. Yes. And here I can connect, just like locally, I can change time and date, I can change camera settings and name stamping, just if it was locally. Super. So, Jimmy, that covered a bit of installation, a bit of <coughs> troubleshooting, a bit of error handling. The end user, the guy or girl sitting out there who would like to see some material. Uh, first of all, as an administrator of the remote portal, we need to add a customer. So, back again to you, Jimmy, and remote portal. So, now we need to add a customer. So you go into the users, press the plus sign, and add a new customer. And cust sorry, Jimmy, customer in our point here is the end user? Yes. Yes. And I enter the email and press save. And now we can see that the user has not yet accepted the invitation. Now the customer or end user needs to go to his email address and accept the invitation for the remote portal. It's exactly the same process as with the technician. It's just for the end customer to get his confirmation and to accept that he will be able to use this uh, login. Yes. So now we have a technician who is responsible for the maintenance of the system. We have an end user that is uh, going to be able to see everything on his um, uh, graphical user interfaces. And one possibility is to use the uh, video security client. That is a free of charge software. Yes. Uh, but first we need to add the customer to the camera. So I will go to customer B and go to the camera which you are allowed to see and then go into remote connect to add the customer now i'm adding the customer i'm seeing all the customers in my on my site and press save and now he have access to check this camera on remote interesting thing with this is that the customer can have s multiple different sites, multiple different accounts, and also be able to use them at the same time. So when he logs in through his software, he will be able to see the, all the other ones that has been created for him, and he just needs to click on the one he would like to see. So Jimmy, video security client, and connecting to the site. Yes, to download the video security client, you go to downloadstore.botsecurity.com, where we have firmwares and softwares and apps. We select the apps, video security client, and download the install file and install it. Once it's installed, you start the software and you press Bosch Remote Portal. If you do press the let's go, it will start to search local network for devices. So we start with Remote Portal. Here we add an account, enter the email. and the password and we click add and now we see customer B and we also see on the map where the address is located that we added earlier now I'm connecting to customer B by clicking 
and we get thumbnail of all the cameras we have added. If I click on the camera, it goes out to live view and we can see Anders holding the camera. Uh, <clears throat> and this is how it looks like when we're making a webcast for remote portal here in Shista. Uh, a bit messy, a bit untidy, but I would just like to show you it's real. It's real live. And we also have the possibility to watch some recorded material. Yes. So I, if I go over to playback, I can see the timeline and I can scroll through the timeline and play. Now we have not had a lot of movement. You can see the sound bars moving around. But it has not been a lot of movement in this camera by this time. No. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, another way is to use a tablet device for the end user. So here you can see the software on the tablet, on this iPad. It can be Android, it can be PC, or it could be an iPhone, for example. Customer B, as we have been seeing before, and now connect to this site. I have the possibility to watch it live. It's actually the camera I have in front of myself. So it's really live. Uh, I have the ability to look at live material. I can also go into recordings to do playback. I can choose multiple cameras or one camera. It's really simple to do that. Uh, I can also do forensic search if I would like to. If I had some movements in this scene, I could choose, for example, a line. I can draw a line somewhere in the picture and search for all the IVA metadata that has been generated to see every object that was crossing this line. So it's the same way of using the software if you're using a tablet, if you're using a PC, or if you're using a mobile phone. It's up to you and the end user what to decide for. So that was the part of the tablet, uh, the video security client, and the possibility for the end user to have a very nice and simple and intuitive user interface to watch LIMA recordings and also do some forensic search. This brings us to the end of this uh, webinar. Me and Jimmy, who has been demonstrating this today, would like to say thank you. Um, next time we see, we will be talking about something completely different. So please look into the schedule, stay tuned, and stay safe. Bye for now.